I suppose for me, um, I've seen the renders, I've seen uh, the plans for the work, but when you actually see it on the site, it really, really just sings at that site. You come over the Waymac Bridge, you see this really large work, you come closer to it, you can see the fans moving on a, on a windy day, and then at night, well that's just something else, it really just transforms it and takes it to another level. So I'm absolutely delighted with the way that it's come together and the way that it really um, is going to place Christchurch and Canterbury on the global arts stage. It's a piece of sculpture that's been in thousands of bits that have been scattered all over the city and over Australasia. And it's basically a concept. It's actually an idea. And finally, I'm seeing it in situ. It's been great that Scape have taken over the project. Uh, the complexity uh, and the management, uh, the fundraising, and the coordination between all of the parties involved in the refurbishment and the refurbishment and the installation of it is something that there's no way that I would have been able to do. Now, for such a simple object, Fanfare has had quite a complex history over a 10-year period. It's had the input from people um, from all over Australasia, beginning with the City of Sydney, who donated it to Christchurch, the Christchurch City Council, and also Scape Public Art. It's a huge thank you to all of those people. I'm, touched at the number of people who have, have donated their time and their money to turning this into being a reality and I hope it lives up to all of our expectations. Fanfare was first actually designed for temporary installation on the Sydney Harbour Bridge for only three weeks. The challenge for the en engineers here was to come up with a 15 year sort of no maintenance period especially on the fans, being quite a challenge. So we found all inherent problems with the original design, which was fine for what it was designed for, which was temporary two-week installation. We then proposed and designed a new fan hub assembly, including the support shaft, and also we introduced an eddy current brake because we found the fans would actually spin to very high RPMs and introduce high stresses within the fan and also generate quite a lot of noise. So the new fan was redesigned, it was quieter, wouldn't get as fast with the Edicump brake being non-contact, non-wearing, no maintenance. So then we tested that fan through a lot of a series of high-speed runs at Rupuna, where we had the fan mounted on the front of a Dodge Ram in essentially clean air, and we were able to rotate the fan to varying angles of attack and test at varying speeds by accelerating from zero to about 150 kilometers an hour. The first time we went out and saw all the steel sitting out on site out of the council yard, it was just a big pile of rusty steel. That was the first real shock to see all that and how much work really needed to go into making it a permanent structure. That was the first milestone was getting all that out to our yard and starting the works on it, which um, seemed to just get bigger and bigger. Well, to be honest with you, when I first uh, opened up the containers, um, I saw the fans and the fans looked, looked awesome. But when I walked to the back of the council yard in Sockburn, I saw the bunch of scrap metal at the back. I thought, what they want me to do with this? So with galvanizing, it's, it's hard dip galvanizing, so it's a, a, a galvanized coating. Once it comes out of the galvanizing, it has a coat that is guaranteed for 50 years. So we had a bottom half, a top half, and two weeks ago, we had to fit the two together, the top half to the bottom half, and it felt like we were doing a hard transplant at that stage because everyone was standing looking if this thing is really going to fit and it all worked out well. Uh, it's awesome to have it finally finished. Um, I'm just stoked to be able to be part of such an awesome project, be able to drive fast every day on the way to work and um, you know, be able to drive the family fast and be able to say that I was part of putting this thing up. Fulton Hogan's uh, started as a family business. It's got core uh, family values and it really prides itself in being involved within the community. Uh, a lot of the work that we do is in the community, uh, alongside the community and uh, in the eye of the community. So it's really important for us to show that we, um, we can give back and show that we're here doing a good job and uh, supporting Christchurch, obviously through the earthquake rebuild especially. Um, and that's what, that's what it's all about. I'm fascinated to see how people will get to know it 
uh, through a series of glimpses and glances um, over time. And I think we build up our relationships with, uh, with public art in that way. It's where it seeps into your consciousness. But I don't see it as being a completion. Um, I think it's just, it's a total beginning for the sculpture, really. Um, I mean, people have had impressions of what it might be like, and I've had impressions of what it's going to be like. What it is, has just begun. There are so many people involved in a project of this size and scale, and I'm very, very grateful to all the individuals, businesses, companies, trusts, foundations, Christchurch City Council and central government for everything that they have done to buy into the vision for this concept and to get in behind and support it. It's been an absolutely huge process and a big project for us as an organisation and we're absolutely excited to think what we'll do next and the leadership role and the learnings that we have from this work in terms of continuing to contribute large-scale and ambitious contemporary public art here in Christchurch City.